We are still in the Easter season one last Sunday, and I still have echoing in my heart uh, one of the music videos from Easter morning. After all the things I've been through, I still have joy. I'm glad to find that uh, refrain persisting because uh, this hard time we are in is feeling harder as it drags on and as we see more clearly uh, the challenges of the next phase. I also am, uh, am glad that the church year offers us the wild story of the ascension of Christ uh, on this Sunday of Easter, because in the end, we can imagine the disciples singing, after all the things we've been through, we still have joy. That's where it ends. Uh, the ascension takes place 40 days after everything fell completely apart. Uh, one of the most trusted disciples betrayed their loving and healing teacher um, who had transformed their lives. The leading disciple denied Jesus three times. The men had all run away. Only a few leading women had remained courageous and faithful. They felt guilt and shame. They felt horror and uh, deep grief. And then Jesus suddenly reappeared, walking through locked doors, turning their sense of reality upside down and cracking it open to reveal powers and realms that they had never imagined. And then, came today, 40 days after he rose from the dead. Jesus led them out of the city to the Mount of Olives, tradition has it, um, and they saw him. They saw him rise into the sky before their eyes. So now they were alone, uncertain where things were going and what they were going to do. It was still only five weeks since Jesus was arrested and tortured and executed. They had no reason to think that it wouldn't happen to them too uh, if they went openly into the city. And yet, the story in Luke says that after Jesus ascended, the disciples returned to Jerusalem with great joy, and they were continually in the temple blessing God. After all the things I've been through, I still have joy. So who knows how much of this story is factual, but we do know that the devastation and danger that that first church faced was real. And we also know that their joy was true and infectious. So if they could feel great joy, well, maybe we can too, even though, like them, our world has been turned upside down and it feels unsafe sometimes to venture out of our homes. And like theirs, the leadership of our nation is autocratic and hostile and unstable, and our future looks grim. So what made, what made great joy possible for them that could also make it possible for us. This past Thursday, someone in our heartfulness circle talked about the toll that this time is taking on young adults and children. Their cumulative pain and, and worry are getting heavier and harder to bear. And compassion for them makes uh, our hearts heavy carrying that weight as well. The Heartfulness uh, Circle offers training and spiritual practices and tools that can open us to the Spirit's guidance and strength um, through our struggles. Uh, and this person talked about how the welcoming practice was helping. But even more, even more, it was helping to remember one of the members of the circle 
who had gone through a terrible personal ordeal and shared with us the wisdom that grew out of every stage of that journey. Just the thought of that person or a person like that can help us in our struggles. And the disciples, the disciples had that too. Just the thought of Jesus helped them find their way to the light that shines in the darkness, to, to the joy that can arise even in the midst of pain. After all the things we've been through, we still have spiritual teachers and models to inspire us and remind us that we can do hard things. After all the things we've been through, we still have the truth that people before us have faced terrible ordeals. And the Holy Spirit has shown them a way through and given them the strength to get there. After all the things we've been through, we still have a vision of what the realm of God on earth could be. Love of neighbor, the golden rule, unconditional compassion, a global ethic built on those principles that could transform this world to be a place of oneness and harmony with nature and with all people. After all the things we've been through, we still have gifts to share. And we still have ways of serving that fill our lives with meaning, purpose, and love. So after all the things we've been through, we still have joy. We will explore other dimensions of this uh, ascension story in our children's time and, um, and in the sermon. Um, but here is, uh, here is Mel Gertz's uh, haiku for this week. Um, which has its own secrets hidden in it uh, for uh, a, a joyful life. Porcupine in the orchard. As Herbert approached him, he kept feeding. Let us worship together, continuing on with this service. <laughs> 